Hi, Martin. Hello. Oh. I'm just merging the pull requests for the agenda. Yeah, let, let's see who shows up. Tara is there. Uh, oh, she did a pull request. Derek. Hey. Hi. How's the heat wave in Europe? Almost done or is still brutal? It's not not as bad. No, it cooled down a little bit at least here. Um really? Yeah. yeah we have not... still 30, 30 something degrees. <laughs> ah no, no. We we've had a few days of like cooling down and like thunderstorms, so it might might get hotter again, but that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, but you're more north. We are like Zurich's almost Italy, so <laughs> yeah. It's still pretty hot out there. Well, yeah, it's like uh, okay. I was as surprised when I actually moved to Chicago is that it's actually at. Uh... Uh, latitude of Rome. Oh yeah. So we're actually pretty far down south by by by, by that. The... But the winters are pretty harsh as well, right? Uh, no. Sure. Now we get snow maybe in January, I guess. Now, for in Chicago, like but a week or two. But you have the lakes, right? They they're cooling a lot. There. Yeah, well, there's a lake effect, right? So there's like some there's generally have like one or two snowstorms, but no, the for the most part, when it snows, it's gone within a week or a couple of days, so it's not that bad. Yeah, one area I still have on my list for the U.S. Chicago, Lake Michigan. Yeah, it's called Windy City, but it's not really that windy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's 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 as windy as any other um high rise area in other cities like New York or whatever. So supposedly it's from the political swings in the nineteenth centuries that was calling the Windy City, but Ah. Hello. 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 And also open. I think we are complete. Um, Pascal is not joining today because he's uh, doing uh, military service. So in oh. Switzerland, so the Swiss people, they do military service not in one block, but over years. You have to go like three or two or three weeks every year. Oh. Ah, so so how how long is he? Yeah, like uh, he started, and maybe the next two weeks he is. Uh, uh, so this week and the next week he is uh, doing his playing war. I think the the prime I mean, enemy is always the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you. Yeah, that's the yeah. role play you. <laughs> yes, so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel I feel they should use some kind of neutral enemy, just or maybe even like make make it, make it fun, make it orcs or something like an orc army. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I find it uh, funny that it's uh, it's so long gone the World War, but it's still like they're preparing against the Germans. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so. I did a couple more pull requests and uh, coming also did a pull request that is summarizing the Apollo error codes and errors. We can have a look at that. Let's quickly do a round of introduction. So welcome everyone. Let me remind you that by being here, we all agree to the GraphQL spec membership agreement and to the GraphQL foundation code of conduct. I'm Michael Stipe, I'm the host today and 
let's do an introduction in the order of the agenda. Um, is... Yeah, I'm Martin. I'm with Apollo. Uh, Camille uh, from the Guild. Derek from Apollo. Awesome. So uh, Pascal actually has an agenda item in here. Uh, yeah. Which is as the preprocessor, but since he's not here, we can also have a look at uh, the the rules that we have so far. I think I so I have polished one of the rules, um, which is the this one here. I already went over a couple of times. This is the uh, semantic equivalence. This way, the, the one thing missing here is still the note that uh, you can opt, but this is a more general note, right? That any uh, rule uh, that might interfere with uh, extensions that you provide, for instance, the um, interface object that Apollo has uh, can also be dropped or modified, right? Yeah. Um, we in general need one of those uh, clarifiers in the validation rules because there could be other features where people then say, okay, in this case, it makes no sense. But basically what the, the rule we already, I think, looked at is, uh, says is that you always, like you can merge uh, types of the same kind, like here two object types, they will merge, but you cannot merge an object type with a scalar, but then again, scalars would merge. This has also now the correct algorithm. Um, I reviewed it with uh, Benji, who gave me some input also on the how we uh, could best write these algorithms to match the GraphQL spec style. Like the, uh, like he uh, outlined a bit more the terms that we use, what a set is, for instance, in the GraphQL specification, what the map and what the list. Like we have uh, yeah. uh, certain meanings for these in the algorithms. Okay. Uh, this is one of the things. I think we already looked at it, um, but this one is basically ready to go if nobody has objections. So you can, I, I can put, post it in the, in the chat. You can have a, look afterwards on it and then either uh, raise an objection over the text or whatever uh, let me find the uh, one question yes. about the the validation rules so do we plan to have like example error messages or is like out of scope so i was thinking no 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 you can join <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we were thinking about um, this, and the idea was to have error codes, mm -hmm. but yeah, not the messages. Do. Okay. I don't know if we want to go that far with messages, but there would be a more, a more editorial. Uh, uh, so I'm asking because, like, for some rules it might be actually useful. So for example, if you throw it that like type is not mergeable, like you need to define which type, right? Yeah. Where? So there needs to be like a, like sense, like some sense of location and you know, like the pointers to the types, right? So for example, in a rule that we are going to like cover, which is like the satisfiability uh, in federation, uh, you know, then the, uh, the thing there is that like it pro like uh, gives you the query path that is not you know uh, uh, satisfiable or like resolvable or however we want to call it, but basically it gives you the idea of like what is not resolvable and why, right? So and the error code will just say like you know there's like the error code is just the error code, right? We need to like explain it. So I'm not like not suggesting to like put it in the spec. But like, I don't know. We need to cover, I think, that as well. But are you talking I mean, about the the, the error message or like additional, message. Ad additional structured data? Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be the error message, but like the you know just the error code. It means nothing, right? It has to yeah. some. It, we have to like define something else that could be our error message or 
like a structure of the uh, you know, uh, uh, things that you can use in the error message or something like that. Should should we have that as an appendix, maybe, where we explain this is the error code, this is the error structure? Or do you yeah, guys... and, and I'm I'm assuming there there will be some like standard ingredients of error messages, or sort of a, like standard ways of encoding query paths, or like referring to locations in particular subgraphs. Um... Mm -hmm. I um I think De Derek might know more about sort of the current output um like how there structured are, that is. Well there the messages are depends on the the error code. So there's different there's but, but, but do we have additional data in, in there, like structured data data? Um like is, well, is the query path part part of the query part of the message, or do we have like a separate path um well, it tells you like the the type names and what are, where they're actually mismatching between the subgraphs, but there's not nothing specifically like structured. Those are just yeah. Structures. To my knowledge, it's just ma error messages okay, and yeah. the location, but like the s like the document node location, like the you know. Yeah. Yeah, we we probably don't want to make it a re requirement, but I mean, well, maybe. Some maybe some structured data could be a requirement, but it, it would be good as a as an appendix as a yeah like if if you provide this information, um, please use this standard format. Yes, yes, and we 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 can it two we can do it twofold. Either we fully specify it, but this could also lead to inflexibility in the implementation, or we have an appendix where we say this is our. Um, proposed uh, error structure for this error. And we uh, strongly recommend you do it like that. Uh, but then there's still an X attached where they say, okay, but I want to do it this other way. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I can uh, do, like I, I, I write a um, a to do for this, so we can pick this, uh, pick this up. Yeah, we could okay. even like do it at the very end. It does not matter. I'm, I mean, yeah. yeah, 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 like an appendix. We already have an appendix for the the selection uh, map syntax. This is also an appendix. I mean, it's the same binding, but it lets us like the the readability of the spec is like nice. Um. You basically have a fluent way through the spec, but then if you want to dig deeper into certain things, you can have a look up in the appendix, which then outlines certain aspects. Um, okay. And there's a second thing that happened this week, and that is that Carmen actually worked on the Federation code. So he collected basically um, all the errors that uh, are not part of federation at the moment. And from this, we should be able also to draw some, um, maybe verify our validation rules that we have at the moment or draft some from them. If yeah. we, yeah, you can take it away. Uh, so those are really the rules that may or may not be relevant to us. I like, uh, like there's a long list of error codes in federation. And I removed those that were like uh, uh, not relevant by the you know first side, right? Like interface object, you know, uh, and everything else that is like out of the scope of the spec. And here are those that were like relevant to us, but uh, you know, maybe some of them are really not. If we like really really think about it, so not sure. Just wanted to like give it as a example, like how Apollo is doing that. And yeah, then this, this and why, <laughs> and then you know, I know like you know a lot of like the, the context of each like not the context like but like works and like you know like instead of like just the error message, I can explain all of those uh, more uh, like better basically. Um, and yeah, I have a test case for each, so then it's also might be helpful. Yeah, very helpful. Okay. 
yeah it's a, is, is, there, is there anything that, that was sort of surprising to you that that uh some there is one rule that i have no idea if there's any logic or like there is a logic <laughs> but i cannot really like tell it's the Which one? extension base or something like that there's like no extension or like base with no extension something like that it's like the left one in the super graph level i believe it sounds like extension a leftover no from, from fed one but extension with yeah no and base. this one is like it's sometimes when you have extent it works sometimes not it's like i cannot really uh, grasp it i have no yeah no idea uh, it's this one or like external missing on base i don't know but uh, but either this one on the next one is uh, i'm not fully like understand it to be honest, I get the idea, but like it doesn't always work this way, so I'm not sure. So you know, ah, uh, I know mean, this must be Federation one, right? Because yeah, like, it looks like, looks like Federation yeah, 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 it could be, yeah, yeah. it might it, be, yeah. and and it makes sense if you look in Federation one. Uh, you had the 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 proper there there must be a proper type to extend upon, right? Yeah, that's basically what it says. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm not sure if that's if if we still no like special case extent type or if we just treat it as a sort of any type definition. Um that's what I would expect, but uh so ex external missing on a base, that's definitely fed one extension of no base. This is actually to me that would sound like this is like the actual GraphQL validation. So if you just want to do extent type and you don't have a type, that should be just an error from the GraphQL right interface, right? Well, oh, but we we, 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 we pre-processed it before, like with, with, with FED1, you were allowed to sort of have an extent type in one subgraph and yeah, yeah. a normal type definition in another one. And I'm not sure if um, with the conversion to FED2, we actually treat like a type extension as a type definition. I, I don't know if we still differentiate between the two um, at the, no, like, during know. merging. Yeah, and yeah in, so in, 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 like in, the one weird thing there is like it's basically a federation v1 rule to be honest because it's really like about extends for backward yeah. compatibility and extend as a you know type definition that makes no sense so for us this makes no sense for the composite schema working group it's just that like you had if like one of those were like weird to me so this one because i i commented yeah. on the on on uh, on zoom that one actually passes yeah. and the other one not. And for me, it's like not logical, but that's like out of the scope of the meeting. So let's not. Uh, yeah, but it does, it. It, it does, um, does mean we probably need to specify sort of how we handle extent extension definitions. Um, how we, how we plan to handle those. Like, are we are, like the, like in my mind, but uh, we can also specify it out. Like this is um, a pre-processing thing that you would need to implement. Like in the end, in the composition process, we at the moment specify there's no extent, right? It's yeah. all okay. type definitions. Yeah. Uh, we could, but probably also as an appendix, uh, say if you want to use type extensions, with, which we, for instance, with Fusion allow, uh, it doesn't. You don't have to do it, but we allow you to use type extension to kind of bring annotations to um, schemas that you might not uh, have control over. Uh, in these cases, uh, we could outline uh, this is the way we propose to do the pre-processing. Uh, and actually, like last week, we talked about um, directives on type extensions as a way of like separating yeah. different categories of. Exactly. Uh, so that, that would also be a use case for this. Um, so we probably do want to specify like extension handling in a, in a little more detail, but at least once you get to merging, um, like that should already be taken care of, right? So we're not... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would also like uh, anything with, with extensions should be done before we start the, the, the actual merge. Yeah. Yeah, we can. We can. Uh, yeah, let let me note that down. Then we can add uh, that actually uh, to the uh, structure we have there, so we outline it. 
Yeah, the external missing on base is pretty much about like, you know, having external in all the subgraphs and there is no definition for a field. Like definition, by definition, I mean, you know, non-external, which yeah. is like the yeah. default, so yeah. And I, I, I guess that's the, that's still a valid error message, right? With the spec we're currently. And with the current, uh, the graphical specification doesn't say how. No, 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 but, but, but for us with, with this spec, um, you could still end up in a situation where a field is external in all subgraphs, right? Yes. If, if, if we specify the pre-processing as part of the composition, then they, then it could even be that you have an extent of a scalar, any type. Uh, oh, no, no, but, but, but I'm talking about external here, right? Not extent. External. Ah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, external. It's the first base in your, uh, oh, okay. This one? Ex uh, so it's external with external missing on base, basically. Uh, it should be in the super graph, uh, somewhere at the end. Yeah, this one. Yeah. One way so. Yeah. External missing on base. That... Yeah, it's just that, like the external says, I cannot resolve that, right? You need to pass it to me uh, broadly. So then if every field is marked as external, then, you know, like nobody really defines or like solve, like resolve that field, right? So that's, the rule is just about that, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, like the external, uh, like in case of uh, a pool federation, is really just for the you know provides and like requires as well. So it's just saying like, you know, just I guess by design is to have a field that you know you you. Like have this contract of yeah the field is there I know it I know the output type of it I know its existence then I can also have like type safety out of the subgraph without looking at the supergraph you know this kind of stuff and uh, yeah and then you mark it as yeah I require that right yeah yeah this one this one is actually uh, uh, yeah you, you need that because like if it's everywhere external right there's yeah, no yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no data <laughs> yep. So this is actually an interesting conversation because we were just uh, chatting about it in the last couple of days. Um, well, fixing one of the issues of the requires. And uh, the question that came out of it was kind of like an interesting one because I was looking at the, um, the field selection syntax uh, PR and that was actually when we were talking about those uh, fields that we're actually passing there, like the arguments for those at require, we were not, we did not talk about the external and how they actually relate to that. Because, well, that is actually has an interesting stuff. Because, well, for the requires right now, well, yeah, we don't have a strong typing there because it's entity mapping, right? It's just representation, right? Um, how we get handled those input types, that's, yeah, entities, that's not there. But the interesting part is about what are the subgraphs expectations for the super graph schema elements that are accessed by the query, right? Because that is yeah. interesting, right? Because well, the the strong typing and uh, the syntax or how to declare it, that that's handled, right? With the at require, you have it in arguments, you already have the types, right? It's fixed. But the expectation well, you, you you don't necessarily have all the types if, if you like if you if you traverse into a type that you yourself. Mm -hmm don't have to find or like a field that yeah. you don't have to find, um, you would still want it in your subgraph marked external, but you want it in your subgraph so you can validate the the require in isolation. Yeah, so th that was actually the, the thing that actually tripped me because that was actually, I uh, uh, my understanding was flawed is that with the requires, that is the selection against the super graph, which doesn't have to be valid locally. Which means that yes. there is actually a flaw in GraphQL spec itself that you can define um, external field that returns you an interface because you don't need an implementation of interface. If it's a nullable field or if it's an array of those, you can just return an interface that it's external, so I shouldn't be able to access it locally, right? 
but um, on the requires, I can actually select an implementation of that implementation. And since if I can resolve it in my entities, it still works. So there's kind of like a very odd use case there, but um, technically it's valid in a way that, you know, you can hack it through. And the question around here is that when we're doing those like mappings and how do you handle those externality and what are those fields? Well, my understanding is that the, with the at require, we do want to have a strong guarantees that what you require actually maps directly to a structure on the given type, right? So we, we, we want to leave yeah. that ambiguity there. So it's actually from that perspective, that should be locally satisfiable, right? So yeah. you can actually yeah. always map it to the correct. But I mean, but, but that, that, that was also, to be fair, that was also the intention behind requires. Um, and, and like at external, it's not part of the GraphQL spec. Right, no. it's it's something we we came up yeah. with uh, specifically for that purpose. Um, so if there's if there's like a missing case, um, yeah. like we allow you to select types that you don't have defined locally. Um, I mean, I would say that's uh, uh, a flaw in our current validation rules, or at least it's it's like looser than it could be. Um, yes. So we probably want to fix fix that for for this spec with at require. Yeah, that definitely. And then and the question around those is like kind of like how do we actually because at external means that those should not be uh, locally resolvable. You want to provide them from somewhere else, right? And the question around this is like okay, so if I'm working on a super graph, that's already taken care of, right? But if I have a, my own you know a subgraph server, if someone hits it, well, there's nothing stopping you for preventing to access those, right? So kind of like, do we need to codify those, uh, that yeah. behavior, what should be happening over there? That's kind of like- but Yeah, I think I think originally the idea was that we would actually filter out the at external fields from the local subgraph schema, that it would only be used for like validation and composition, but it wouldn't be part of the local schema. Um, well, but but how do then means that every subgraph that actually marks that it actually should be doing that, right? Means that it's a subgraph implementation detail that they actually. That means the, the 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 external data is passed in through arguments here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and this way, it's still valid, like uh, it's for the supergraph to understand. But if you were to just use it locally, the schema. You would have to satisfy the arguments, and then the fields would be there. Yeah, it's like the satisfiability rule will actually have to consider like all the query paths. So you know, like yeah, it has to always go from the like through the the arguments, right? Yeah. So the we... external, like I'm not sure if I see a reason to actually remove the fields that are external. From well, the, I, th I think I think the know. issue is that you you would in theory be able to like query those external fields if you hit the subgraph directly. Like if it's part if it's part of the subgraph schema, um, and you execute the query against that subgraph uh, directly. Oh, uh, by directly you mean like like directly? Yeah, you like... use it. Yeah. Just... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, then, but, yeah. So far, but, yeah. But, but sure. like this 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 is a problem with Apollo Federation, not with the composite schema spec, right? Because that part oh. of federation has the entities field. Uh, no, but, it, but, it, you... but, it, but the issue is not the entities field. The issue is yeah. um, anything that's marked external should not be. I, you're right. Yeah. yeah it, you could have uh, like query users and then, you know, boom, it's there, right? Yeah, yeah it's because like it it's there be in a certain path. Uh, yes. Because like if you have the combination with provides, uh, like you have two, two fields exposed uh, on this subgraph then uh, through one of them, you could get uh, certain fields and through the other one not, right? Yeah, like the the only thing that makes sure that this is resolvable is the query planner, right? Yeah. Or like any logic yeah. engagement. Yep. Otherwise, you can do mistakes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was just thinking with requires. With requires, you don't have the problem because like you would provide actually the data through the arguments and then they would be there. No, but, but, but even with require, um, let's say that you require a field, a particular field on user, um, um, but like by definition, that's not a field you yourself are able to serve, right? Um, but if it's part of your local schema, if, if you don't filter out that external field, someone could just execute a query against your 
subgraph server and ask for that field because it's part of your schema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's only there because for the composition. Yeah. Essentially. It's basically a, a non-resolvable field. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but maybe something worth thinking about whether we we want to filter those out. But but I think you're right. Provide actually complicates the matter because in that case, some queries against those fields will be valid. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, yeah, and, maybe, and maybe the answer is that we know about this and we just guarantee that this is the gateway responsibility to call that and. You don't expose, but if they're using it as part of the composite schemas and as a separate schema that someone can hit, then there could be a potential problem there, right? Yeah, I think maybe, maybe the answer like... is that we just say, yeah, it has to go to the query planner. Yeah, if if I mean if if you're using external, if you use certain features, then uh, the schema makes no sense out of the scope anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 like and, the... and in the case where the subgraph is also independently being used, it would probably be an overlay, right? So the you would have a separate schema in if like effectively for the like gateway facing and the public facing API. Yeah, could could, could be, but could, you could also say um, I don't care because I know it's just used within in these boundaries, and I don't expose it anyway publicly. Yeah, I feel like the problem. Go ahead, Kevin. Would be with the like uh, if you have a field and you like remove it from the schema, some implementations uh, won't be uh, aware of that field, even like if you use like async GraphQL or like whatever. Like the implementation of a subgraph will have to take care and will have to resolve it. And if it's like not in the schema, then it's like this like mystery field, you know, that is like out of the how do you call it out of the like the regular algorithm for GraphQL, like the like real GraphQL, like you know, GraphQL JS, GraphQL implementation spec compliant, right? So it would yeah. have to either have like two schemas and resolve one of these conditionally or has some extra logic within the implementation, right? Which is like makes it a bit more uh, annoying, I would say. So it's a trade-off, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm honestly <laughs> think we should like uh, keep those external fields in the schema. And then it's that's, just easier for everyone. If that's somebody what we, wants that's to, what we like, currently do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we we haven't touched on the rules around external yet, but yeah, we we be. So maybe it would be worth calling out somewhere in the spec that basically the expectation is that the schema makes sense in the the federated gateway environment, right? When you're using the query planning and all that stuff, as for like the. If you're using it as a standalone server, you may need to transform it or like put some, you know, filtering on it to exclude certain elements which don't make any sense in the standalone yeah. environment. I mean, there there are certain features you could use, and they will not do anything. But the moment you you use kind of traffic steering features like provides uh, and external, then uh, you build something specifically for this distributed context, right? Yeah. Any, anything else that surprised you looking at these rules? Um, uh, I can't tell just, you know, right now. Uh, there were some that were like, uh, uh, a bit confusing, uh, maybe one. I don't. I I don't remember. But just like the more I like go deep into the federation, then it's just you know made more and more sense. Like especially if you like look at the think about the federation from like query planning perspective, it just makes more sense than just looking at you know the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the, like the, the, example, the, the examples here mm -hmm. are also useful. Like that really. Helps you get a better yeah, sense. I have like a how do you call it? like a code or like you know uh, SDLs for each, so then I can even like extend it to more to be to more. But I guess like like initially I would like I imagine we like at some point we'll go through all of these or like we'll I will categorize it so we you know make it easier for everyone and then we will see because those are like 
not about like merging in some cases it's about the like the actual spec like the ref, you know you reference inaccessible or like you required an inaccessible or like you know there's like the like the enum intersection or like you know input object types and so on like enum intersection for example is tricky because it it depends if you are using referencing the enums as like inputs or like outputs and yeah. you know it's like a lot yeah, of enum stuff. intersection is something we have uh, that we are have to tackle right uh, pascal is working on that but do you have it in there uh there is yeah there is like a empty merged enum type but the whole logic for like input objects there is i think the enum value mismatch like yeah, yeah it's like in the output it, and the it's this one yeah because steven from netflix he uh he's reading through the pull request that uh like um very often and he commented also specifically on this thing because um at the moment we specified that they have to be uh, the same but we anyway discussed it last uh, week that uh, they should follow the way a proliferation did it with uh, uh depending on if it's an input uh, or output be intersecting um or union so right with the enum stuff is actually also an interesting thing because i think it's it's actually solved by the lookups because if you use the enum there as part of the key it is actually handled as an input type right for the like the federation when you're using the entities right you have to account that it's actually could be part of the key there as well so that's kind of like that's an input type there right so you mean it's sort of like an, an implicit input type, like something yes. we wouldn't be able to, de to detect? Yes. Because yeah. with the lookups, it's explicit, right? You have it, you pass yeah. it as an argument, right? So. Yeah. But uh, it's still like EDAMs, uh, you could have them just at out on output types, right? Or just on input types. Yeah. 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 Then... Yeah, uh, like I will go through uh, this also like over the next week and see what we already covered and where we need more rules. Um, at the moment, like we have, I think, 17 or 16 already in some form or shape. They are like, uh, except for one, they are not mergeable yet. Like the algorithms are sometimes too uh, complex. <laughs> and and it, it needs to have a very clear uh, like uh, it needs to be very simple to read these guys as um yeah so we can use this as a basis to validate uh which ones are good and also to see which ones are missing i think there's also an, a website from apollo i saw where they also list um kind it's, of it's in it's in the it's in the docs yeah but yeah. um, I'm, I'm not sure it has like example error messages yeah. to docs. Um, but, but it has like a explanation, like a very brief explanation of what the rule is about. I like, think this, so, good. yeah. But this, this would be also good because like when you look at the uh, validation rules, how we uh, structure them, right? It's always in the thing like explanatory text, algorithm and examples, right? this basically the three parts plus error code yeah uh, we can also grab a lot of the error codes uh, like apollo has already tons of these and it makes no sense to invent new ones <laughs> otherwise we have to have mapping <laughs> yeah so we can take that over we just just the the missing part always is the algorithm but uh yeah takes a bit of time to get all through all of these. Okay, that's a bit it for what we have done last week. Let me just check. That's Monte. This is what this one, as I said, is is I think ready. So give it review. Uh, oh, one thing about like the uh, type equivalent not at the definition level but like the reference level so if you have like a object field that references a union let's say uh in federation a federation 
uh, in some other subgraphs, it could be the same field of the same you know object uh, that refer reference the like a union member. So you could have, have like a you know users in one graph, but in some other could be or like products, and in some other could be like a I don't know. A, uh, I am out of example. So animals, right? <laughs> and the other one could be like dog, right? And that's like, uh, and that's fine. And the same applies for like interfaces. So you can reference an interface, but some subgraph could like return, like their fields could return, like the same fields could return the implementations of those interfaces. And it's also okay. So yeah. those are like the things that we- uh, It's basically a yeah, subtype. Like, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the correct term. And it's also not obvious, like I had, like I discovered that at some point only. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, by the way, the enum rule that was already uh, in the comment. This is uh, Steve. Um, so the Netflix people are following. Yeah, about the enums being like strictly equal. Like there's like yeah. a, ideal subgraph and there's like the uh, evolution of a subgraph right and then if you have yeah, like yeah. all those equal then and then, then you have like 190 subgraphs and like 50 enums then you have to like make it equal in all of them in order to get the composition correct right yeah so it's yeah pain in the ass a bit yeah yeah no 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 we we're gonna we're gonna rewrite this we just um copied it over and but mm -hmm. now we're gonna uh, rewrite this and i think pascal already that, that we're going to relax it. Oh, there's one thing I wanted to discuss. I discussed it sure. briefly with Martin. Uh, it's the, we had a use case where, uh, where uh, when somebody is like uh, introducing a federation in their, you know, uh, architecture, they, and they have like a type called, let's say user, right? And then it has like 10 fields or something. So. Yeah. The rule, the core rule of federation is like every single query path has to be like executable. Like it has to resolve the data, right? And in some cases, if you want to introduce a new field, you know, this field may or may not be like shareable. And if it's not, it has to come from one subgraph, right? So you need to like jump from one subgraph to another doing like an yeah. entity call or however we call it, like lookup basically in order to resolve it, right? But then it has to be an entity, right? If it's not an entity, you cannot do the jump. You can do the jump if the parent of whatever is an exactly. entity, right? Yeah. And so on and so on. So I was thinking like uh, this rule of having everything like satisfiable uh, is very strict and, uh, it, and it's fine. It should be always. It's just that I was thinking about like the, that maybe at some point it could be out of the spec currently at the same at this level but maybe at some point we could discuss like not an fk patch but like a uh like migrate not migration but like a i don't know like a, you know a way that people like start from scratch they have their own graphql apis and they want to you know like turn this giant monolith into you know subgraphs and whatever and you know uh but and it, if but, we but, can but, do but, but what's what's the specific um like what's what's breaking in this case because i would expect if you if you have a an existing subgraph um and like you put federation in front of it um like all the types in that subgraph sh should still be fully satisfiable oh, um so the the context there is that if, like the the team were using the um uh, schema stitching or some other form of like merging the like for example hazura has also a similar thing when you can just you know join subgraphs or like GraphQL APIs pretty much, and then it works, right? But all of them are lacking, like for example, the issue with schema stitching was that like there is no satisfiability rule because you don't know the context of the subgraphs, right? Yeah. Uh, I believe in Hazura it's kind of similar, but I'm not sure, so I cannot really tell. I'm just like, you know, because they just teach inputs and, but then you have the context, right? And uh, yeah, so that's the, like, that's the context. So they have something that is working, but now they introduce a user type that is shared, but then it has a field only in one subgraph. So you need to resolve it from that graph, but you cannot like really call it directly or indirectly, right? So that's the issue. And I'm not saying this is the big, big issue, but I'm saying like maybe there are more cases like that 
And but but, uh, but this is the issue that they can't make it an entity. Um, uh, no, it, it, they could, but it, they don't it, but... have like a. It cannot be an entity, right? Because there is no. Uh, no, they don't. It's just ref, like it's like an arbitrary data, so like a, I don't know, uh, a but comment, in, you know. In Hazura, like, like I just watched the presentation in in Berlin of it. It's like more you have types, and then you can insert like relations basically between types, uh, and then you can jump from one to the other graph. Basically, you introduce a field to this graph and say this is a relation to get this, and you get it by this information. So it looks more like 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 real schema stitching. Yeah, it's okay. like a really the schema stitching problem. That was the like the core of it, and then it's like you know if you want to adopt federation, then it you needs to like you know make everything like you know satisfiable, and that's fine. It's just that like so I was thinking like yeah, bring bring this example not just to solve it here, but like you know think also about like uh, people moving for example from the Apollo Federation or like other approaches to the spec itself, right? So maybe. Yeah, but there are things that we could do. Uh, would, but, but it would be good to, to see a complete example, I think. Yeah, with, yeah uh, for sure. With, this, yeah, yeah. With, with the broken schema. Um, yeah, yeah, I can I can, I can uh, prepare something that would be actually uh, promised it's a good, to it's do a good it topic. for you, but yeah. I forgot. Yeah. But I think from Apollo Federation to this spec should be a subgraph by subgraph migration, right? Like it, I don't like know. It's, yeah. in general, we have the same composability rules, so it should just work. But I, like you have to take one subgraph, upgrade it full to the new spec, and then if the gateway can speak both specifications, it should just work. Yeah, that's something I haven't like really thought yet about. <laughs> I mean, it's, stitching is a different thing, right? Because stitching you can do a lot of a lot of things like data massaging even in your resolvers or whatever um, yeah, but I, I would like, say like a lot of invalid things but yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not judging but but like uh, composite schema spec Apollo should be like it's the same composability rules uh, Apollo has a bit more functionality uh, so as long as you stay in the functionality of what the composite schema spec offers as well it should be we're swapping out this uh, subgraph with a new spec and it's migrated and then you would same composability rules. Yeah, if it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's my that's the uh, idea I have in, in my head at least. Yeah, I, I, th I think that that's true. And like uh, unless we like introduce radically different rules, um, yeah. I think the. The, the composition um, should still work, even if if it's a mix of like existing Apollo Federation subgraphs and and subgraphs that that use the new spec. Like like the, the the main difference is like the introduction of lookup and require, um, and yes. and th those are like per subgraph concerns. Like the query planner needs to obviously needs to be aware of which subgraph like has those features and and which subgraph doesn't. Um, but uh, but it should be able to 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 mix different subgraphs. Yeah, because like uh, if if you if you rewrite the request to go against an entities field or against the lookup in the end, yeah, it's the same thing. Well, it would be well. It yeah, on an, on a, on a it very complicates things because if you do try to do both, uh, yeah, well, actually. On the single fetch, you would hit just one thing, I guess. But um, yeah, technically, you could yeah. have both entities and lookup on the same graph. Uh, so I'm I'm just because well, yeah, the, the stuff that we talked about a long time ago, right? It was the, it was the batching mechanism, right? And how you would do those require fields with the batching, right? And how do you uh, the variable batching, right? And there, but that's not part of the spec, so you probably need. We're, we're, I, I think we're still assuming that variable batching will be in place. Um, yes. Well, like but it, it's, 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 it will be. I have a talk thing. about it at GraphQL. <laughs> yeah. Ah, nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, because well, assumption is is nice, but the, that being said, right? So there is an HTTP spec, right, for GraphQL that it says that says from next year, every server out there should be using the, uh, you know, new, um, uh, you know, the 
accept headers, right, and stuff like that. I don't, I don't think a lot of servers actually do. Uh, maybe I'm yes. wrong. Maybe they do, but it's. Uh, so we go, we like this has very different concerns. I would just say yeah. if a subgraph uses a composite schema spec, it has these capabilities. Um, it has the capability of variable batching, right? Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't do a mixed approach where you have both on the same subgraph because then you get into uh, a lot yeah, of it complications. Be weird. It be weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would uh, say, like, if a subgraph has that, uh, it should be easy to integrate into um, into an infrastructure that has Apollo Federation support. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just thinking more of a situation that you were describing, like a bring your own graph, right? That uh, the, you know, the extra extensions that you're doing in Fusion, right? I'd say, add, this is my lookup now, right? But that graph may not do variable batching because it doesn't know about it. But you know, this is a lookup, right? Um, it's kind of like... Yes. How, so, how that, so How that will work, right? Yeah, but uh, like you can also use request batching. So the way uh, we will describe it for the spec is that variable batching is ideal. But if a server has request batching, and um, I see that a lot, we can also reuse this. It's a bit more but, overhead. But if they don't, then that's also, so it's kind of like multiple things, right? Because they may not do a request batch and they may not do any sort of batching, right? So then, yeah. we... well, then you get a de degraded experience. And yeah. in this sure. case, that's probably, that depending on how you use that subgraph, it might be, um, might be good enough, yes. blocking, like the performance might be unacceptable yeah. or it might just work because it's only a single piece of data with like a few entities <laughs> yeah and it's always like uh let's see how um are, are you guys already implementing the new graphical of http spec in apollo in the Apollo, apollo part, yeah like a lot of stuff is there yes um, yeah. like the clients are yeah it's already a big a big chunk of the community then <laughs> yeah we, we we also support it um i know uh that the graphical java guys also have it in place yeah yeah i mean well, the Jazz, java i mean like the spring right the spring uh... yeah, yeah yeah and have you gotten any feedback from like variable batching yet like, has batching. anyone yeah, has anyone uh, no. taken, taken a look yet outside of this group? Um, yeah, Benji, but uh, it's like uh, still uh, a very locus thing that's part of us. So I, at the graphical conf, I will take a look at like the, all sorts of batching algorithms to to um, a bit also start discussion on that. And until then, I have to have the document in place so people can go after the talk and look these things up. Yeah, but uh, and hopefully that'll uh, generate some excitement. <laughs> yeah, also I I I don't see variable batching just useful for us. That's why it's uh, yeah. I could uh, see a lot of solution like uh, batch inserting certain things and stuff like that, um, and also like uh, <laughs> like all sorts of things like 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 for the talk I will I think. Uh, look at all kinds of <laughs> use cases that might not even be valid, but uh, like to uh, a bit uh, start an idea process with people. Yeah. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, like, uh, I don't think that, uh, like, like the, I don't have so much concern for batching because like request batching is in most graph guys. So. Do do you know actually one that doesn't allow request batching? I haven't tried them all, so I have no idea. Um, <laughs> it's actually I, I don't know if a Spring actually does the batching. Um, I don't know if they do. I'll ask Andy. Uh, he will know. <laughs> it would be interesting to see if they uh, they 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 implement batching. Like a lot of Apollo front end customers used to uh, ask for batching to kind of have a better uh, benefits utilization that that you don't have too many requests. 
And because I think the link provider allows for batching, basically batching together the, the request on the front end. Yeah. So there is, there is there are requests for batching from the client to the gateway, from the gateway to the subgraphs. That was actually not that common. Yeah, but if it's there for, for, for clients, from client to a server, then the graph server will support some kind of batching. Yeah, I mean, they're independent. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can support one without the other. Yeah. Or use one without the other. Um, but... Yeah, we're going to see. We are also yeah. at the end. Um, yeah. That's good discussions. Uh, I will try to make more rules available. Uh, and I will look um, through the document comment provided. Hey, and uh, then, uh, before we uh, drop off, uh, Michael, I was trying to look up the the directive PR or issue, and I don't see any. Um, which which directive PR? On overall, about like all the directives. You know, they, are they, are you in the the, the spec repo or the? Yeah, yeah, and I'm spec repo. The working group yeah. repo. Okay. In the in the spec repo, which should be then let me give you the numbers. I see the field selection RFC, but. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, it is. No, that's field selection. Because I, I remember that you had a PR open there. That was a, yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I don't see a... that anymore. This is the oh, yeah, source schema chapter, it's called. <laughs> we renamed it. That's why you don't find it. It's a uh, thirty, the number thirty. Okay, cool. Because because originally I just worked on uh, the lookup in there, and then we uh, basically the put all the directives in there. Okay. There is okay. still two missing. I have to put in there. I think the key directive is missing. I think is it that just the key? No key directive. Oh, it's a key directive there. Yeah, I have to go 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 through it again and um I think the, there was a separate one for the lookup, so maybe that, that had to be merged or something in there. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I consolidated and uh, the key I, I the key directive is in there, um, but it's missing the arguments. Uh, I have to write some text for that still. Yeah, there's also external in there key. Yeah, that the, the they should be all in there. Yeah, uh, you. If there's something missing, just just comment if you if you go through it. Sounds good. Yeah. Awesome. All right. All right, guys. Well, see you next, see you next week. week. <laughs> yep. Bye.